hi, I'm here with Bruce Gimbel, a nonprofit consultant who, um, who's one of his clients is Lighthouse Ministries, a homeless shelter in Florida, and is here to talk to us about his experience applying for the Paycheck Protection Loan. Bruce, how are you doing? I'm well, thank you, Ezra. Awesome, awesome. So as a consultant, did you submit separate applications for both yourself and Lighthouse Ministries? I did. Um, for Lighthouse, um, I applied for the PP uh, payroll protection uh, loan and the emergency or the disaster relief loan as well. Um, both of those were submitted on the 3rd of uh, April. And um, uh, we found out the following week um, for the PP uh, payroll protection on Thursday, um, the director received word from the bank that um, that they had, uh, SBA had approved it. And I just spoke with him earlier today and inquired about uh, a timeline for the actual funding. And he said that uh, the banker didn't have an answer to that, didn't know uh, how soon they'd actually get funded. And um, on the other disaster relief uh, loan application, we haven't heard back on, uh, we've gotten no acknowledgement or anything on that at this time. And then uh, you wanted to, about my application personally. Yes. Um, again, those, uh, I submitted those um, the same day. Um, and the payroll protection, I actually went through one of uh, Finder's um, uh, companies, um, Fundera, and submitted the, the paperwork uh, to them. And I got an email, I think it was yesterday, uh, stating um, that they had received uh, the application and uh, would be contacting me if there was any additional information they needed. And also um, when they had identified a bank or a funding uh, source uh, to actually um, fund that lo loan to me. And then on the um, disaster relief uh, loan application, I found, uh, got an email this morning from uh, directly from SBA stating that um, they've changed the um, initially you were to receive uh, a ten thousand uh, dollar down payment if you will on a loan which would be funded uh, and discussed at a later date but what they've done now is they've tied the 10,000 to the number of employees in your organization. So uh, for Lighthouse, the change is not impacted, uh, is not gonna impact them because they have close to 90 employees. But in my case, what they've done is they've taken the 10,000 and said that basically you would have to have 10 or more employees to get to 10,000. And in my case, it's only one employee self-employed. So I would be uh, receiving uh, $1,000, not 10,000. And then it didn't say anything. The email didn't uh, speak to the loan amount, uh, which was advertised to be up to 2 million. Of course, I'm not gonna be asking for that much, but anyway. That's, that's all I know at this point is that they've changed the, um, how they're going to be uh, giving out that 10,000 to the applicants. And, um, and that's all I've got gotten on that. And um, so that's where we're at. And it's up to uh, 1,000 per employee specifically. Yes. Yeah. Um, how would you say the you know the application processes compared to applying as a business versus as like a sole proprietor? 
Um, the applications were uh, identical um, with Lighthouse. Uh, with the application, there was no indication as to what kind of backup you needed. Um, so we took the approach uh, with Lighthouse that we were going to give them as much information with the application um, that we, you know, we we've we've taken out loans before, so we know that they want certain financial information. In this case, they want they they're going to want backup as to the payroll uh, uh, numbers as well. So we gave them um, financials, um, we gave them audited statements from 2018, uh, we gave them the in-house financials for 19, uh, financials uh, year to date, I think through February of this year. Uh, we gave them payroll information for 2019 uh, um, as well as uh, health insurance backup for all those different things. So the packet was uh, close to 50 pages uh, or more of uh, information that went in with the PPP loan for Lighthouse. And, um, and then with the, uh, and in my case, uh, I did the same thing. I had f already filed my uh, 2019 tax return. So I, I made copies of certain pages for that. Um, I gave them a, a, a payroll roster, if you will, for last year and my current year. And um, I think uh, my application as a sole proprietor was maybe, I don't know, six or seven pages uh, of information. And then in both cases for the disaster relief, um, there was minimal information given, um, just the basics that were in the application. Um, and we had no, in both cases, we had no additional attachments. So just to reiterate, for Lighthouse Ministries, you applied through a bank, and for yourself personally, you applied online through Fundera. That's correct. How did the two methods compare um, for you? Um, <clears throat> well, personally, for me, I was a little um, uh, concerned uh, that after I completed the information on Fundera, um, I did not get an acknowledgement um, until about a week later. Actually, well, that was on the 3rd, and I got something yesterday. So uh, that's over a week. Um, and basically, um, that acknowledgement was something I thought, you know, it was very basic and very short. Um, I just thought it would have come earlier. <laughs> you know, I didn't know the company. And my, my personal concern was I just gave somebody I don't know all my vital statistics, <laughs> uh, social, uh, you know, bank account number, et cetera. So, um, um, you know, if I had to talk to somebody at Fundera, I'd say, you know, uh, you might want to get that email out a little quicker so we know that people know that, uh, uh, you know, not that you're not legit, but you know, it'd be nice to get a quicker email acknowledging that we've got your information and we'll get back with you. Uh, on the bank side, the director at Lighthouse had relationship with the bank. Um, they've got a major loan with that bank. Um, you know, they've got uh, checking accounts, et cetera. So in that case, you had uh, face to face. Um, the director took the app straight to the bank sat down with his bank uh, loan officer that he's worked with over the years. Um, and then whatever, uh, that guy took it and submitted it and, you know, hand walked it into the SBA. And, and then we got a good answer uh, pretty quickly as well. So you would say and that's, you know, I want to, I want to make a comment too. I'm not, um, I'm personally, I'm not a, um, high high tech current tech person 
Um, and so my comments about Fundera are not about the company. Um, and, you know, you got to take me with a pound of salt, I suppose, um, because I'm not used to doing that, that type of stuff online. That's all. So you would say that overall applying through a bank that you have had a, a lasting relationship with was a more seamless process than applying through an online lender? Um, yeah, I, I think for a, a large organization, um, that's probably the most prudent avenue. Uh, that way you've got somebody else working uh, the system, if you will, for, for you. Uh, in my case, I had been uh, employed, uh, you know, I, I semi-retired in uh, late 18 and began my consulting business uh, in 19. And um, I'm not, in prior years, I had been self-employed. So to come back to a self-employed situation, I just didn't have the bank relationship um, that I would have if I was uh, back in my executive chair working for uh, this other uh, nonprofit, I would have gone to my bank as well. Uh, but knowing uh, knowing somebody that works at Finder uh, and talking to that individual, um, I was comfortable uh, taking the approach online uh, and going that avenue. Uh, had it not been for that relationship, I I might have gone to a local bank that I, I have my current checking account with and, and uh, traveled that way. Um, but I'm, I've got no regret, if you will, um, uh, going through Finder and, and Fundera. Can you uh, briefly give us a timeline of, for what happened after you submitted the application for both yourself and the application for Lighthouse Industries? Uh, timeline. Um, okay, I'll start with Lighthouse. Uh, we um, submitted. Uh, um, well, okay, with uh, the PPP loan, uh, we downloaded on the third the application. Um, I worked with the accountant that day to pull together the backup documents. Uh, we made photocopies, scanned the whole package, um, and he, the executive director, actually took the um, uh, paper copy of the application and backup, took that down to the bank on the 3rd, and then he followed up with a, an email and a PDF that had everything that was given in paper. Uh, that happened on the 3rd. Um, also on the third, uh, same day after that was done, I went online, uh, got the application for the disaster relief, uh, went ahead, filled that out and emailed that directly to uh, SBA uh, or submitted it through the SBA site. And uh, so that all happened on the third. Um, and then the, the following, uh, week on the 9th, uh, actually it was the late evening of the 9th, uh, the director got a, a, an email from uh, the banker uh, stating that the uh, application was approved by SBA and uh, that was on the 9th. And, um, and then I had a conversation today with the uh, director and he indicated that they were didn't know when the funding was coming and that's where we stood with that one <clears throat> then um, with the disaster relief uh, uh, he has not uh, gotten any word back from sba on that he's the contact person i put in that uh, application um, and so that's where we're, we're today with mine um, i did uh, the Fundera on the, I think it was the third as well, um, and submitted that uh, through Fundera. Um, I actually tried to submit it through another one, another uh, company uh, on Finder, but their website 
was giving me problems. It wasn't uh, their their application <clears throat> process uh, kept cutting me off. And so at one point I just stopped, deleted everything and went back and uh, we went to fund uh, Fundera, submitted all that with the backup information. Uh, and then yesterday, which is uh, what the 13th yesterday, um, I got the email from Fundera stating that they have my information. Uh, if, I, if they need anything else, they'll email me directly. Uh, and if not, they'll get back with me when they find a funding source. And, um, and then again, with my um, disaster relief, I haven't, uh, today, I got the email from SBA, which outlined those changes I mentioned before about, um, you know, my anticipation now is not for a $10,000 funding support, but $1,000. And that's all they said in that email. Based on your experience, what would you advise other borrowers to do if they need to um, apply for these loans for this loan to keep their business afloat. Um, likewise, what would you recommend they do if they're applying as you know consultant or sole proprietor? Uh, okay, so what would I recommend if somebody else was a um, sole proprietor? Um, yes. Well, I you know. If, if, they, if they've been in their business for a sufficient period of time and have been working with a funder uh, for other loans, uh, I would probably recommend they go to that, that bank or that organization. Um, part of the reason is they've got other background information on file that if they needed to uh, supplement the application with backup information they can better you know they can easily do that uh they know our history um you know your your history in terms of uh, equity loans uh and can probably work with you to um to help determine how much funding you should go for given what your cash flow was and what you anticipated to be as you move through this uh period of, of uh, the pandemic. Um, being a one-man operation with uh, no real history of uh, needing loans through a bank for my operation, um, I felt this was as good a, an avenue uh, to go through Fundera uh, and let them manage that process for me, not knowing what uh, you know, I've never had a SBA loan or grant in the past, so um, I felt comfortable letting them manage that process for me. Well, thank you so much um, for providing such valuable information, Bruce, and good luck out there.